if they didn't beat the bell, I would just mark them present because I knew they were trying to get there. Because I had control of the book and they were my students. And I'm so thankful when the Lord is looking at me. He said, I know you don't have it all together, but he's trying and he belongs to me. I count him faithful. Amen. Amen. Paul is writing this letter to Timothy. He's leaving Timothy. He's left Timothy in place at Ephesus after founding the church. He's leaving. He's left Timothy in place, and he's writing this letter because there's a lot going on. There's a lot of conversations going on that, and a lot of things going on. You'll see it earlier in the chapter. He talks about these uh, conversations and arguments uh, that are useless and purpose purposeless, uh, just take you down the rabbit hole, talking about endless genealogies. And then he starts talking about immorality and and sexual sins. And and, and he's talking about problems in the church. And he's talking about problems in the community. And he finishes listing all of those problems in the place where he founded a church, in the place where he left a young pastor to serve. And when he finishes that, he says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. With all of the stuff he just listed, he says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord. And, and, and it's, it's, I want to say, I want to stop and say how important it is for the older generation to have open lines of communication to the younger generation. I, I, I know I'm, I'm one of the last of the generations that got parented Uh, But it's still a need for us to parent our children. I know those generations after me, you know, the parents became friends with the children and the children got raised by TV. And and, and I just want to say it's really important for the older generation to share wisdom and knowledge and experiences with the younger generation. Because, you know, uh, strength comes along with youth. But you know what else comes along with youth? Foolishness. They just suppose you can't just fly off the handle when your child does something dumb, stupid, and reckless because it just comes along with youth. It's in the package. Some stuff you just got to hit your head against the wall to figure out. But if a parent is there, if a mentor is there, if an elder is there, they can stop them and say, okay, now what's the lesson we learned from this? You don't just keep hitting your head. You just don't keep going down the dead end road. We learn from it so that we can grow and be better. And I'm so thankful that Timothy had a Paul in his life. I'm so thankful that Timothy had a Paul in his life. But some of us, most of us, had some older folks in our lives that were able to talk to us and to correct us and to discipline us. Y'all forgive me, but I grew up in a time where we got whooped with switch switches. At church, we got whooped with switches. I think, Dick boy, did you whoop me? Mama ain't here today. You didn't whoop me. It's some folks around here that whooped me when I was little. It's still some folks in here. But you know what? It didn't kill me. And I'm better for it. If some of these young folks had got whooped, we wouldn't be scared to go to the store at night. Uh, let me I'll try to behave while, while we got guests here. Let me try to behave. Let me try to behave. Uh, uh, Paul says, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I want you to understand that uh, Paul wasn't living on easy street. Everything wasn't going Paul's way. Uh, Tish? Paul had gone through some stuff that we, some of us would have fainted. We wouldn't have made it through it. And if we made it through it, we would have wrote a new blues song for WDIA Saturday in the morning. If you will flip over or scroll to 2 Corinthians 11, verse 24, Paul starts to list here and chronologically 2 Corinthians is written before 1 Timothy. So everything we're about to look at 
in 2 Corinthians happened before he makes the statement, and I thank Christ Jesus our Lord. 2 Corinthians eleven twenty four. he says, of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Five times they whipped him 39 lashes. Five times. And he still has the nerve to say, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Once was I stoned. They stoned him, y'all, and thought he was dead. They were trying to kill him. He, he said, thrice I suffered shipwreck in three shipwrecks, and then a night and a day have I been in the deep. He was stranded in the sea for a day and a half after being on one of those shipwrecks. In journeyings often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils by my own folk, my own countrymen, I was in danger by them. In perils by the heathen, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, danger everywhere I go. In perils in the sea, in perils among false Brethren, supposed to be your people, supposed to be your own team, and in danger by them. He said, in weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fasting often, in cold and nakedness. And he still had the audacity to say, I thank the Lord. I want you to check yourself and see what your list look like. Because I don't have most of this stuff that he had. And on the wrong day, I'll get up ungrateful and unthankful. He just raised the standard for me. I hadn't been floating in the ocean for a day and a half. I hadn't had folks turning on me trying to kill me. I hadn't been in danger. We talk about being blessed in the city and blessed in the field. There's some perils in the city and danger in the field. I ain't been through all that. And if I don't get myself together, sometimes I wake up complaining to God and telling him what the plan should have been. Paul said, and I thank I thank him. All the bad stuff I've been through, I thank him anyhow. All the problems I had, I thank him anyhow. Heartbreak I had, I thank him anyhow. Sickness I had, I thank him anyhow. Feeling alone and lost and confused, I thank him anyhow. When I can't hear his voice and it feels like I'm in darkness, I thank him anyhow. Because I trust him beyond what I can see. Listen, he says, and I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me. He hath enabled me. He hath enabled Now listen. The enabling is different. The, the enabling, uh, video, go with me. The enabling is different because when you, when Bishop first got, uh, I don't remember which car it was. It was one of, them, one of the Lexus. But when my father uh, had got one of those cars that was fancy, one of them high-end flagship smart type of cars, so spoke, uh, I would be driving it and strange stuff would happen. I would be driving Bishop and a light would pop on the screen to give me a message that something had just kicked in. I would be driving and if I get too close to a car in front of me, uh, uh, the car would slow down on its own. Didn't matter if I was mashing the gas, the car would slow down on its own. If, if I was in uh, ice or snow and the car started to slip, something would pop on the screen to let me know some traction had been enabled. What, I, what, what, what the scripture is saying, we, we thank Christ Jesus our Lord because he has enabled us. 
that when my environment changes, my situations change, and something else is needed for me to be successful in this moment, he's already equipped the stuff in me, and it just kicks on. Some of y'all trying to figure out when you've been in hostile environments why the old you didn't kick up because the new you had been enabled and there was a grace that came along to keep them cuss words out your mouth and make you say, I bless the Lord. I ain't going to hit you. I'm going to walk away because God has changed me. I've been, I've been enabled. He said, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who hath enabled me. For that he counted me faithful. He counted me faithful. He counted me faithful. He didn't say, bro, Pope, he didn't say, I am faithful. He said, he counted. He, he counted me faithful. That, that ain't hitting y'all like it's hitting me. Because it's some stuff I didn't deserve to, I didn't qualify for it. I didn't deserve to be on that list. But because he looked at me and he said, that's mine, put him on the faithful list. That's that's mine. Put him on the blessed list. Oh, I know he's supposed to have some consequences, but no, move him, move him over here. Because I control the list. And I cover him. So when you look at him, you see my son's blood. I used to, I used to teach school and I had a homeroom on the second floor. And I would, I would see the kids coming because my my classroom overlooked the main entrance where the kids would come in. And I would see the kids coming. And I could see the kids that were playing coming in. And I could see the kids that were struggling and running and trying to get to class on time. And you know what I would do when I was sitting up high, looking low, and my children coming in? If I saw somebody hustling and trying to get there, and they didn't beat the bell, Kevin, if they were really tardy because I was looking over to see that they were trying and I had the book. If they didn't beat the bell, I would just mark them present because I knew they were trying to get there because I had control of the book and they were my students. And I'm so thankful when the Lord is looking at me. He said, I know he don't have it all together, but he's trying, and he belongs to me. I count him faithful.